Hi everyone, this is part 3 on reading probabilities for the Z table. Now, if you haven't already watched part 1, I suggest you watch part 1 up to the point where I talk about the various formats of the tables for the Z. Now, along with the format discussed in part 1, in part three, we discuss also a very common, in my experience, a very common format for the Z table. And it is that the Z table gives you the probabilities for Z greater than a number. So represented by here, this picture, Z on the horizontal axis, A is a point on there, and the table gives you the body of the table gives you the probability to the right of the point A. Now we're going to work through the exercise that is presented in the first part of the video, but we're going to be using the table where Z is bigger than A. So let's go ahead and do that. First question is probability that Z is less than zero. All right, so Z is along here, zero is right down the middle, so we want a sketch of the area, we want, we want that area. Now, using that, using the fact that this Z distribution is symmetric around zero, it must mean that the area to the left of zero and the area to the right of zero are half, because we've used also another idea that Another fact, sorry, is that the area under the curve comes to 1. Okay, So since the area of the curve comes to 1 and it's symmetric around 0, it must mean the area to the left of 0 is equal to the area to the right of 0, so it must come to a half. Let's see how we could get that answer from the table. Now, the table gives us the probabilities when the z is of the form z is greater than a number. So what we have to do is re-express this problem in terms of z is greater than. Well here we've got z is less than. So if think of a picture which is a, gives us the equivalent area but re-expresses the problem in terms of z greater than. Well this one is straightforward here because can you see that if we flip this over, flip it 180 degrees, we have this which it's the same area, isn't it? These two are the same area, and this one area here is z greater than zero. That's a shade, what, represented by the shaded region. Now it is of the inequality that is uh, expressed by the t by the table, so we can look it up directly. The probability. Right. So here is the one on uh, statisticsmentor.com. Gives us the probability that z is bigger than a number we want uh, that zero. All right, so going down the the, uh, the rows here represents, gives us the Z value up to the first decimal place and along the column gives us the Z value up to the second decimal place. We want zero on the f up to the first decimal place and zero on the second decimal place. So where they meet is here, it's 0.5. That's the which is as we expect. So that's done. Okay. Next. We have probability that z is less than minus 0.9. Now, we've got a minus sign here. So, first of all, we have to express this problem in terms of a positive number. Why? Because the tables gives us positives, z, z's, z's, not negatives. So look down here, they're all positive, no negatives. And then we have to re-express it so that this is not less than, but it's of the form greater than, because our table is giving us of the form z's greater than something. Right, so to get rid of the negative sign is similar to the same idea to the previous question. Flip this 180 degrees should give us the same area. Will give us the same area. Not should, but
but will. So there you go. So these two are equivalent. So z is less than minus 0.9 is the same as probability that z is greater than 0.9. Probability that z is greater than 0.9. Aha. And so in flipping it, this inequality is also flipped this way. So we can now read this directly from the table. We want 0.9. So we go down, run down the row to get the first decimal place here, 0.9. And the second decimal place we want to be 0. So we have 0 0.1841. That's the answer. Before we write that down, let's just say here that this thing that I'm running down is the z value up to the first decimal place. And where I run across here, the, over the columns, this represents the second decimal place of z. Everything in the body here, starting from 0.5, all the way up here, all the block in the body of the table, that represents the probability that z is greater than the value a. Good. Right, next. Here we have the probability that z is between an interval of two positive numbers. Okay, as shown here. Now we have to re since they're both positive numbers, that's fine because the z values uh, in the table are positive. Uh, so next we have to re express the problem so it's in terms of z bigger than a number. Well, this bit is z bigger than 0 0.5, that's fine, it's form bigger than. But here, z is less than 0.96, well, so we have to somehow re-express that so it's in a form of greater than. Again, think of this as a think of a picture that is equivalent to this, but involves z greater than. OK, so this doesn't take much imagination. That this strip here is equal to that z is bigger than a half, and subtract from that that z is bigger than 0.96. Writing that in terms of the algebra there. So this bit goes with this bit picture and this bit goes with that picture. And now we look up the probabilities. So we want a half and we want 0.96. OK, um, a half, 0.5, here, 0.5, and the second decimal place should be 0. So we have 0 0.3085. Also, we want 0 0.96. So 0 0.9, so let's go down here. Yeah, it's 0 0.9. Slide along until we get 0 0.06 to get the second decimal place here. Stop. So it's 0 0.1685. Okay, like that. So the answer is 0.14. Next, this time we have an interval here which we've got a negative and a positive. So the previous one we have positive, positive. How do we deal with the case where we have a negative and a positive? So z between negative 0.67 and positive 0.67. Right, so two things to deal with. We have a negative sign, so we want to somehow re-express this so it's got an, uh, positives. Uh, also, we have a less than sign. Well, we don't want less than signs. We've got to express everything in terms of greater than. So let's think of a picture where we can redraw re this picture so that it satisfies those two things that we're looking for. Well, how about this? Doesn't this work? So I'm saying that it's same as area under the curve, which is a whole lot of 1. And then it's like a jigsaw. We subtract from it the end here, but two of them, because one end belongs here, and the other end is the other side. So if we take off those two piece end pieces, won't we get just the middle piece left? Of course. Now, this here is already in the form we want because it's probably that z is bigger than 0.67. So what we want is basically this whole area don't, it's obviously one area under the curve. 
this thing we look up 0.67 and then just times it by 2 and we'll get the answer so 0.67 let's look at it in the table 0.6 there you go 0.67 slide along till we hit 7 there 0.07 so, so it's 0.2514 all right, and that gives us 0 0.4972. Fantastic. Now, I want to sh show you that I can also uh, do it another way. Same question. How about this picture? This picture here. Look, um, I take half a side, which I know the areas are half. And I subtract the n bit. Probably that z is bigger than 0.67. Well, if I do that, that's like removing this bit, so it gives me this central bit. All right. But that's not exactly what I want because what I because that cent that central bit will correspond only from zero to here, this central bit. So what do I need to do? I need to double it to get the other area. So two times whatever this comes to. Let's see that we get the same answer. So it's equal to two times and then in brackets this area is a half. We don't even need the table to do that. Minus point z is bigger than point six seven where well, we already looked that up. It's point two five one four. Plug it into the calculator we get the same answer. Point four nine seven two fantastic so far we've dealt with the case where z is between two positive numbers and then also between a negative and a positive number and now to complete the story treat the case where z is between two negative numbers so given that the table only gives us positive values we need to first convert these negatives or express it this problem in terms of positive values and then get the inequality is the right way around. Okay, so that's what we have. But to get to, to express it in terms of positive is what we've done all along. We reflect it, we kind of flip it over or reflect it. So now we have that's between 0 0.08 and 0 0.4. That's uh, shaded region there they are the same now we've got to express this thing here now we've got the positives express it so that the inequalities are all of the form z greater than but there's nothing new here because that since they're both positive now it's sim similar to the same question we did previously so it's going to be equal to this lump there bigger than 0.8 and subtract from that lump, it's not very statistical words I'm using here, but lumps, right, oh, subtract from point 0.08, what am I saying, 0.08, sorry, subtract from it point area to the right of point 0.4, like so. So we need to look up the probabilities. This here corresponds to that probability z is greater than 0.08. I guess and yeah and minus the probability that z is greater than not point four. Come on pen, right? Four like that. So for the tables we want point oh eight, also the figure for point four. Point oh eight, right, point oh eight, so the first row point Oh, 08 slide along to we get 8 there that's point oh 008 it's point 0.4681 right and the other one what we require is point 0.4 exactly so it's point 0.4s there so it's point 0.3446 take these over and plug it in so equal point oh 0.08 point 0.4681 one wasn't it and minus 
this is 0 0.3446 okay what does that that comes to 0 0.1235 presto done okay final one we're after z is less than 0 0.234 the thing to note about this is that we've got something a digit in the third decimal place however in the tables tables go up to the second decimal place because down the across the rows here we go up to the first decimal place the columns we hit the second decimal place we don't go beyond so what happens when we have more than two decimal places this is where we have to use some kind of approximation technique now this is where you could have been taught various things this is where we kind of diverge I'll just mention a few ways one way is to say consider the third decimal place if that third decimal place figure is less than or equal to five then we just round down so in that case it'll become in this case it'll become point two three uh, but if the third decimal place was bigger than five we would round up okay Alternatively, we could say, let's use the rule that if it's less than 5, we round down. But if it's bigger than or equal to 5, we would round up. So in this case, the, if we're using that kind of idea, then 4 here is less than 5, so we would round down. Yet another way is could say that if it's less than 5 we round down if it's greater than 5 we round up but if it is exactly the third decimal place is equal to 5 we take the average of the lower value of the second decimal place and also the the uh, higher value of the second decimal place in other words if we had the problem was instead that z is less than 0 0.235 using this kind of approximation technique we would look up we would basically calculate the average of z the average of z is less than 0 0.23 and probably z is greater than 0. Uh, sorry, not le greater, less than 0 0.24. So take the average of those two and that will give us about the halfway point. So it's 0 0.235. Still, some others of you will have learnt uh, using interpolation, uh, using fractional values. Now, just bear in mind that, you know, these tables were created in the days where computer power was really is really uh, poor. Uh, these days we can calculate these probabilities to however many decimal places you like and the computers will do that for you so statisticians don't bother. Um, so for us though we need to be able to use tables to pass exams and do homework um, but I was thinking don't uh, don't worry too much about these decimal places after the second decimal place. Uh, for my students, I usually do one of, just do a common sense thing, you know, do one of these three. Okay. Well, unless I've missed anything, I have now presented those, shown you how to read the probabilities of the uh, Z table for three different formats. I hope I haven't missed anything out. Let me know if I have. Now, I guess that what I can go on to next is show you because a lot of you ask this, how to look up the critical values from the tables, which is slightly different to what I've been doing in these three series of three videos. Um, but that, I guess, will be for another time when I'm well rested. Okay, I'm Phil, Statistics Mentor.